Tonight, with the urgent search and rescue operation underway, tonight after Hurricane Ida slammed into Louisiana, into New Orleans, one of the most powerful hurricanes ever to hit. Hurricane Ida making landfall near Port Fouchon, Louisiana, as an extremely dangerous Category 4 storm. With winds 150 miles per hour and those reported wind gusts reaching 172 miles per hour. And then remaining a Category 4 storm for an astonishing six hours, tearing through southeast Louisiana, ripping parts of the city of Lockport to shreds. In New Orleans, the new levees after Katrina did hold. That was reassuring, but the city's reinforced power grid did not. Tonight, more than a million customers across Louisiana are without power. And the utility now warning it could take weeks to restore. No way to charge phones. For many, no way to call for help. Hospitals filled with COVID patients had no choice but to shelter in place. This hospital, the roof torn off, Oxner Health System transferring about 165 patients after some of their buildings suffered damage. Tonight, the images of the Coast Guard, the helicopters taking off as soon as they could to try to assess the damage, out searching for people who stayed in their homes, reports some trapped in their attics for many hours, some waving to the Coast Guard above. Tonight, we know of at least two deaths. The governor saying tonight that we should be prepared for that number to rise. And this storm is still moving across the south and then right up into the northeast. There are real concerns going into tonight and, of course, the days ahead. Ginger Z standing by to time it all out. But first, what's been left behind by this devastating hurricane? ABC's chief national correspondent, Matt Gutman, leading us off tonight in Houma, Louisiana. Hurricane Ida slamming Louisiana as a monstrous Category 4 with reported wind gusts topping 170 miles per hour. And tonight, the scope of the destruction becoming easier to see, but harder to bear. Entire communities almost wiped off the map. More than a million customers now without power. The outages could last for weeks, and officials fear the death toll will rise. There's somebody in there, I think. The massive search and rescue operation ramping up since the storm hit. This woman pulled out of her flooded car. We traveled to hard hit Laplace, just west of New Orleans. Rescuers in boats and helicopters desperately trying to reach those trapped in flooded homes. Where the town had been, now a lake, accessible only by boat and by aircraft. Scenes defying the imagination. The hurricane toppling semi trucks, submerging cars. Helicopters swooping down landing on Interstate 10 to scoop up the most vulnerable, including that woman in the wheelchair. Yeah. As we arrived, we saw the storm's refugees walking off that exit ramp, carrying what was most dear. Some of them trying to hitch rides from strangers, all of them hoping to get to safety. Michael from the Cajun Navy offered to take us in. This entire town is submerged. We're driving on the main street. And there we saw a flotilla of small boats on the water carrying out the stranded and the exhausted. And it was on dry land that we met these two. You guys didn't expect it would be this bad, did We didn't expect it to be this bad. And we stayed because we were in a two-story home. And we thought we would have been safe. The rain just kept coming. It wouldn't stop coming. The rain wouldn't stop coming. We pushed further into Laplace, seeing entire neighborhoods submerged. The stranded flagging down anyone with a boat. We put a line there. That's where the water was at. Jackie and Denise Cooper's mother, Lucille, is disabled, and they asked me to help get her down the stairs. You guys going to come back? No, no. Do you think at any point that you might not make it? Yeah. Michael had gone back to get help. He needed more boats. Sure enough, within half an hour, he was back. We then drove to the hard-hit city of Homa. On the way, so much destruction. That pair of helicopters flying low, looking for survivors. Ida tearing across Grand Isle like a buzzsaw. New images tonight showing the barrier island underwater. Officials tonight still haven't been able to reach many of the dozens of people who stayed behind there in defiance of mandatory evacuation orders. Just over 30 miles from there, the Coast Guard surveying the damage near Galliano for the first time. Homes shredded, roads flooded. This chopper flying a patient to a hospital. At least one levee was overtopped in Plaquemines Parish, south of the city, and reports of people trapped in their attics in Jefferson Parish. This is an area that, if you want to think of it like swampland, um, there's alligators out there. Our Ginger Z in nearby Jefferson Parish, just south of New Orleans. The town of Lafitte has one way in and one way out, and that one way is covered by water. They are protected up to seven feet. Their levees were overtopped during the storm. 
Rescuers doing everything they can to reach survivors. From house to house, we're going past them, and if, if people want to be evacuated, we're putting them on the boats to get them out. President Biden declaring a major disaster in Louisiana, promising a vast federal response. That's our job. If we work together, we're, we're going to stand with you and the people of the Gulf as long as it takes for you to recover. And tonight, the concern in the hours ahead is the people still stuck in their homes without 911 and without power. Many now turning to social media. Right now, we're checking on everybody that we can. Concerned families messaging Vincent Ocello over Facebook, asking him to check on their missing loved ones. And stranded residents reportedly giving a thumbs up to the Coast Guard waiting to get out. And Matt Gutman, just extraordinary reporting all night long, all day long. He's with us from HOMA. And Matt, more than a million customers, as we said, without power. And they said possibly for weeks. And I know there are reports many people are still stranded tonight. You're learning new information about the rescue operation underway. It is breathtaking in scale, that rescue operation. There are already 5,000 National Guards here. More on the way. Virtually every local and state and federal agency sending personnel and vehicles. And, of course, hundreds from the Cajun Navy with their high-water vehicles and shallow draft boats. And perhaps what we saw in Laplace encapsulates everything. The Cajun Navy scooping people up from that high water, ferrying them to the interstate where Coast Guard and National Guard helicopters took them to safety. I'm told they're going to continue working until nightfall and then start right back up in the morning. Hundreds, David, have been rescued so far. We're thinking about everyone there in Louisiana tonight. Matt, thank you.